You'll want to sleep on this one. Hey everybody, I'm Kelly Wilkness here with Anita Joyce and this is Decorating Tips and Tricks, Design a Bedroom for Better Sleep. You may just have a problem falling asleep or staying asleep and a lot of it may have to do with the design of your room. Isn't that the truth? There's a lot that we can do to really improve our chances of getting a good night's sleep and some of us have some not so helpful habits too. Yeah. Yes. So other rooms are designed for purpose is that they're intended to be used for, right? Like the family room, TV, comfort, dining room, eating meals, etc. The bedroom somehow seems to sort of get lost in the shuffle. It doesn't get the same purposeful thought and planning. Lots of times the bedroom becomes a dumping ground, <laughs> thinking a pile of laundry maybe, or uh, a pile of work, or you know, just stuff you workout don't workout equipment. Work. Oh, that's the worst, right? So workout isn't that equipment? the worst? You're trying to go to sleep and you're staring at your workout equipment that you haven't used in five months that was really expensive. Yeah, how, you're how dusty. How restful is that? Dumbbells. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. And that's what happens. It's a private room usually. And so it's a place where you can kind of scuttle away things that, you know, maybe they were supposed to go someplace else or into a closet or into somebody else's room or the laundry did get folded, but it never got put away in everybody's drawers and it's still in your room. And that is not going to be conducive to a good night's sleep. No. And I think also the problem is sometimes somebody has a small house, they tend to make their bedroom a multifunctional room. And uh, I again, I think it's good in theory, but it's not helpful for sleep. You really need to think of this as this is the place I go to sleep and not for watching TV late at night, not for folding laundry or working out so much, but sleeping. I, I agree. There's probably a place for these other things. Even if you live in a very small house, it may just be rethinking it. You know, it might just be sort of the default to put things in the bedroom. As I mentioned, because it's a private room, you might not leave things out in the living room because you might have people over and they would see it. Uh, and, you, and maybe you're good at clearing it off your dining room table or your kitchen table because you have to eat there or you have to prep meals. But in the bedroom, maybe you're not even in there all day day long but then you're going in there to go to sleep and it's all looking at you some things that you need to do some things you might feel guilty about like the workout equipment uh, things that might cause you stress like piles of work papers so we're going to talk today about how you can design and decorate your bedroom to promote better sleep and we've got some very specific things to talk to you about and items to share with you as well well one of my favorite things for sleeping well at night are some night sounds some white noise do you have a white noise machine or uh, do you do the, use an app on your phone at night? I don't, but my daughter started doing that and she was playing crickets. It was like you were sleeping out in the forest. <laughs> it's very well, relaxing. I have, right. I have a white noise machine I've had a long time. Kevin really likes it because he's a very light sleeper. I can sleep through pretty much anything. I, you know, if it's a loud thunderstorm, they're all talking about it in the morning. And I'm like, huh, it rained last night. <laughs> but if you're a light sleeper, I think it's really a great idea, especially if you're near maybe a freeway or if you're in an apartment and you have noisy neighbors. I think it really does help drown it out. And also, I think there's a lot to be said for there to be kind of signals uh, or a routine that tells your brain and tells your body it's time to go to sleep. So I think that's a nice signal to your body. Hey, it's time to go to sleep. So I think it's a nice thing to turn on your white noise. And there, a lot of them have several different sounds you can use. I found a particular white noise machine that I'll be sharing in the show notes. But uh, there's also some apps on your phone that you can use. Uh, so it's really something that's pretty accessible. And I really think it does do uh, a great job of helping you go to sleep. I admit I do look at my my phone uh, before I go to bed. But uh, for an iPhone, and I don't know about other phones, but you can set it so that it has a nighttime mode. And after a certain time, it goes into a much more yellow screen. Mm -hmm. So you can do that. Uh, but also you can get some light, uh, blue light blocking glasses to fit over your glasses. And I'm, I found a pair that sound like they're pretty good uh, that I'll link to. 
but you know that's another thing that you can do but i have uh, like i said my phone does go yellow after i think it's a 10 or i think after 10 yeah that's a good setting and i i have exploring those blue light glasses too because you know we spend a lot of time on the computer just in generally um and my daughters were talking about it because they're spending so much more time on the computer for their schoolwork now so uh we just ordered a couple pairs for them so i can link to those because i did a lot of research on those and some of them are looking pretty snazzy and they're clear they're when i first heard blue light glasses i thought oh they're are they blue? No, you don't look like Elton John or anything wearing them. They're clear. Okay, so let's get into the specifics. How can you decorate and design your bedroom to promote optimal sleep? So we've already talked about following uh, a routine in the evening to sort of indicate to your body it's time to rest. We are talked about not having a lot of extraneous things in your room that don't have anything to do with sleep. In fact, are sort of uh, the opposite of sleep, mm-hmm. work, workout, house chores, all of that should be out of your room. So clear it all out, declutter it, uh, no piles, and you want to then foster this calming, tranquil type of atmosphere. So dressing your bed in a really nice breathable linen or cotton is a way to go. You don't want to have any synthetic sheets on your bed or bedding on, on your bed not good for you. And we've talked about off-gassing and all those things uh, with a lot of different products, but natural materials. I love linen sheets. I will never go back. I, they're very cooling. I think that they're, it's a great choice. So if you have those or you want to give those a try, I highly recommend going linen. Yes, but I think you have to be careful because I have bought some linen sheets before that were really rough. Mm-hmm. So not all linen sheets are the same. You want some that are have a very fine thread so that they feel much more smooth. But the thing I like about them is that they are very cooling. They're cool to the touch. So for the summers, if you're, it, it's going to cool you off. And that's one of the problems with going to sleep is one of the best known problems for sleep is if you're too hot, you're not going to go to sleep. So you really do need to be able to cool off. Uh, so the, the cooler, the linen sheets are going to help you cool off. And having that right temperature in your room, we t- turn the AC down. When we get in, uh, when we go to bed, to make sure it's plenty cool at night. So I think that would help uh, a lot with your sleep. Yeah, and even if you're someplace where you have to have the heat on, maybe crack a window. I, my grandmother always slept with the window open, and we were in New York all, all year round. And I remember staying over at our house, and I always stayed in her room with her when she babysat me. And I thought it was freezing in there, but she slept really <laughs> soundly. And I, and then as I got older, I always like to have the window open when I'm sleeping. Just a little bit of fresh air, I think, goes a long way. And certainly bringing the temperature down is a good idea. Well, and when I was pregnant, I had to have the ceiling fan on all the time. And, you mm-hmm. know, even after my kids were born, I then I just had to have it on. So we have the ceiling fan. Of course, again, we're in Texas. It's hot here all the time. So, I mean, there's like a month out of the year I don't have the ceiling fan on. Right, but right. That does. For, and, you know, another thing I was going to mention, because if you're sleeping, really, I think one of the most important factors is your mattress. And we just got a new mattress recently. Um, it's an Awara. This is not sponsored, but we have really enjoyed it. I like that it doesn't have all those, uh, it doesn't have the formaldehyde in it, I don't think. So it's not off-gassing like some mattresses. And it's a little bit cooler, some of those memory foam mattresses. And although I like the way they sleep, uh, sometimes those can really run hot. But this one's a hybrid mattress and it's not hot. But because it has those individual coils, when one person turns over, it doesn't shake the whole bed. Oh, that's a good tip. Because, I mean, that's one of those things. It's so hard to buy a mattress. It I'm is. Working, I'm working with some clients now, and they had a, lot, a long list of things they wanted out of their mattress. And we landed on Avocado, which is another oh, one of these organic yes. brands. That's one of the ones I considered. I, so that's fantastic. I'm glad you went with that one. These synthetic things are full of things that are going to off gas and your nose, your body is so close to this. You're going to be absorbing any kind of chemicals that are coming out. It's not just breathing, but you know, your skin can absorb toxic things in, in the air as well. Another item that I have not tried yet, but people say really work 
are these weighted blankets. Now think about them. People have them for dogs. Uh, Some dogs are afraid of weather or loud noises or whatnot. And they have sort of these weighted either, I guess, blankets or like these little jackets that the dogs can wear. And think about how you, when you swaddle a baby, you know, how they wrap the baby up when it's first born at the hospital and then how you might do that and when you're home with your little tiny infant, swaddling them, making them feel really um, cuddled. And this is what the weighted blanket will do for an adult. So I was looking into it because I had heard about that, that this is a, a really great thing to add to your bedroom. And I found a company called uh, Barabi, Bara, it's B-A, B-E-A-R-A-B-Y. I'll put the link in the show notes. Wall color. It's pretty clear some of the colors you wouldn't choose for a bedroom. Some common colors you may choose are the gray, taupe, blue, even some, you know, clearly some whites would be good, but you could go darker too. You could do that lovely hail navy from Benjamin Moore, or you could do the Kendall charcoal. I want you all, if you haven't done it, go into your bedroom and have a good look around. Is it all you'd want it to be? Is it all it can be? So you want to make sure that there's symmetry and balance. The bed should always be the focal point. And then the height of the ceiling is important with respect to the other things that you choose, the type of headboard and all of that. But with the bed as the focal point, then you want to create some balance around the room. And the bed is such a big piece. It really is probably the biggest piece of furniture you'll have in your home. (laughs) Bigger than a sofa. So balancing that is sometimes a bit of a struggle. So you want to balance it with maybe a dresser or a dresser and a tall mirror. And maybe then you can even put a bench or a chair, or if you're lucky enough to have a larger room, maybe two chairs and a little table in between, giving enough weight to the other side of the room to balance with the bed. You know, I I wanted to go back for a second to the blue light because I think also what you can do when you're going to sleep is, or getting ready for bed, is to have just some low lighting on, you know, just some lamps, for example, rather than your uh, overhead lamp, uh, overhead light on, because you don't want a lot of light. You want it to be kind of very restful, peaceful kind of uh, twilight uh, light in there as you're preparing to sleep. And so I did want to mention, because there's so many light bulbs out there, and there's so many blue light bulbs, to be sure you have a yellow tinted light bulb in the lights that you're using before you go to bed. And the old incandescent lights uh, are do have a yellow tint, but if you can't get the incandescent, then I think you can get some other types of light that say that they're, they have the yellow tint. Yeah, lighting is so important as symmetry and balances in every room. Lighting is so important in every room and super important in your bedroom. All kinds of lighting should be present in your room that you would have in any other room. So there could be maybe the task lighting is the reading lighting, some overhead lighting, and then some table lamps would be really nice or a standing lamp or something like that. You know, you could put them on a timer uh, in case you did fall asleep, um, you know, with them on. I mean, there's always different options like that. Don't you just love a great recommendation from a friend? Well, we're delighted to be recommending these companies and their wonderful products to you today. And let them know your friends at DTT sent you. BritBox just keeps getting better. The new Archie is amazing. And it's not the comics. It's about Cary Grant. Archie is the brand new limited series starring Jason Isaacs as Archie Leach, the man who became Cary Grant. From the award-winning screenwriter of Philomena, Archie tells Grant's born in Britain, made in Hollywood story, the dramatic grit to glamour transformation that led him to become one of the most famous people in the world. You are going to absolutely love the acting, but also the styling, the outfits, the scenery. It's the first time his story has been told in collaboration with his daughter, Jennifer Grant, and ex-wife, Diane Cannon. The performances from Jason Isaacs and the rest of the cast are amazing. And it's only available on BritBox. So sign up for BritBox today to stream Archie and other fan favorites from any device. And we have a special limited time offer for our U.S. and Canadian listeners. Get 50% off. Yes, that's 50% off your first month when you sign up for a monthly plan. But only if you go to BritBox.com and use our promotion code DTT at checkout. You're going to love Archie. So head over right now and get 50% off your first month of BritBox. Use the promotion code DTT at BritBox.com.
Inevitably, with the new year, come wellness goals. One very effective and easy to reach goal is to add DOSE to your wellness regime. DOSE is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. Formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health, potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. There's zero sugar and zero calories. Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with DOSE to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing DOSE two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. Since starting with Dose about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give Dose a shot and invest in your health like I have, Dose is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to dosedaily.co slash DTT and use the code DTT. That's dosedaily.co.co slash DTT and use the code DTT. And then let's talk about scent. Scent is so important. Lavender obviously is touted as a calming and promoting sleep, but there are other, you know, lavender is not your thing. There are definitely other scents out there that can also promote sleep and just take you into this, this place of relaxation, make it part of your routine, maybe even your face wash or your moisturizer or something has some lovely scents in it that would also trigger more relaxation. I found a pillow spray. It's got almost 2,500 uh, reviews and they're all really good. It's by a company called This Works and it's called Deep Sleep Pillow Spray. So maybe something like that or if you're an essentials oils person, maybe just rub a little lavender on your temples or make your own lavender spray and spritz it on your pillows before you're going to bed. It's just a really nice thing. I was doing that for a while and then I ran out and I should really just make another little batch of that because it really was nice. I don't know that it necessarily put me to sleep right away, but it definitely added to the routine of making it a really calm, relaxing atmosphere. Yeah. Or what about some lotion that's yes. scented that's mm -hmm. uh, got some essential oils in it? Not that, uh, not, not that synthetic stuff that's not good for you. But, you know, just a good quality lotion with some uh, real lavender oil or something in there, that would be wonderful and relaxing. There's something that you're really going to be able to smell it. Or like you said, spraying your pillow or, or your bedding. I like that idea, too, because there's so many ways to get that scent in. And you certainly don't want to put a candle in there, right? Because you don't want that burning while you're asleep. Right. I mean, I do have a candle in my bedroom and I'll I'll light it if I'm in there doing something like folding the laundry or, you know, tidying up or something or changing. But I always say, oh my gosh, I would, what if I forget to turn this off or blow it out? So I wouldn't want to do that at night. How about a diffuser too? That's something that Great people idea. can use. And then you don't have to worry about, and I'm, I'm fairly certain most of those can be on a timer or it just shuts off after a certain period of time. Another thing that you might want to try is some calming CBD oils that we can suggest, NYC Botanics. It's a really calming formula, and that's something you might want to add to your routine right now. And check your electronics at the door. <laughs> oh, that one's so tough. It is tough. It stays downstairs. I put it in its charger, and that's the end of it until the next morning. Oh, that's a good point. And if you do keep your phone in the bedroom, you know, you can get one of those with the uh, covers on that protect you from the radiation. And that's help. That's good too. I don't know that helps your sleep, but just something to do. And make your bed every day. It mm. certainly makes it more enticing to climb into it at night if the bed is made. Sometimes I just like, oh, and then I say to myself, Kelly, it's going to take five minutes, 10 minutes, you know, if you fluff all the pillows, just do it. And I'm so glad that I made it when I go back upstairs at night to go to sleep. That I think that's part of the routine too. It's not hundreds of pillows, but there's there's more than a few. But you know, there's a few. You take them off and you put them out there, you know, you know, whether on the floor or stack them up somewhere. Even though it's extra steps, you're like, why am I making the bed? No one's coming into my room. But I think it definitely adds to the routine. And maybe you, it'd be good if your routine was a little bit longer to get your body ready for sleep. You know, now you're in this calming room. The walls are a great color. There's balance and symmetry, which your mind is picking up. And 
and it smells good and the lighting is nice. And now you go over and you take your toss pillows and you put them to the side and maybe you're okay, three Euro shams and okay, you know, your, your, your little decorative pillow that goes on top. And now you pull the bed sheets down and then maybe you spritz it with your lavender spray. Doesn't this sound great? And then you climb in and maybe oh, you'll fall right wonderful. to sleep. <laughs> it sounds wonderful. And, and I, I'm so with you on having a peaceful, restful design and to avoid some colors that just are kind of exciting and and beautiful, but not really restful. And you really kind of extend that to maybe the artwork in the room, to the patterns and the fabrics in the room, so that it's just something that when you see it, you think, oh, this looks so peaceful. Oh, this is just so relaxing. I mean, this really should be one of your favorite rooms. And I know you've said several times, this is not where you're entertaining. So why does it matter that it looked nice? But this is your retreat. So I think it's very important that it looked nice. Uh, because it's for you. Yes. And getting back to the sheets and the duvet and all of that, you know, sometimes, you know, oh, that's so pretty. That's such a bold floral. I love it. And so you're picking something out based on a pattern that you might want to see in in a more active place than your bedroom. And maybe you're picking it also for the color or for the design, but not really focusing on the materials. So I would just caution you, especially if you're ordering online, you know, it really is better just to go with some neutrals. You can always jazz it up with a splashy pillow or a brightly colored throw or a brightly designed throw and, and toss that over the end of the bed or something like that. But I really think for your foundational pieces, you really should get the best quality uh, cotton or linen that you can and that it should be in neutral tones and then, you know, jazz it up with accessories, just like we would tell you to do for a sofa. Yeah. Yeah, I so agree with that. I mean, this is your bedroom. I mean, I, I think it's worth splurging on something really that's good quality. You don't have to go for the most expensive thing, but it's really worth investing in something that's a good quality. And, you know, obviously there's a massive price range for that good quality. But how restful is that going into a room knowing that you really hate your bedding, you hate the color of the room, you, uh, you know, the, the, sheets don't feel good, all that stuff. I think this is really important and they do help you sleep. Oh yeah. If you can get a swatch in advance, mm -hmm. you know, do that or read the reviews and see, you know, what other people are saying about it because, you know, it is an investment. Like we just bought another set of pillows. Pillows I find so difficult. I read about them and I thought, oh, this is really what we want and they're, it's not off gassing and it's this and it's that. They're just not great. You know, they're better than the worn out ones we had, but they're still not great. Bedding is very personal. Figure out what really works for you. Figure out what kind of sleeper you are, side sleeper, back sleeper. You know, all of that makes a difference when you're making choices. So do we have a hot topic? We do. And it is called, this is the title, Sadly, the Pandemic Could Be the Millennial's Best Chance to Buy a House. Now, we'll include the link to this specific article, as always. And... Really, I think the point of this is, hey, if you think you've got, um, if you're looking for a house, this is not necessarily a bad time to buy. It feels unstable, and I think there is some instability, but if you feel very comfortable that you're going to be able, that your job is going to be around, uh, that the, the prices have softened. I see a lot of houses going on the market and selling around here. So I don't know what that means as far as the market in general, but there seems to be some movement here, both for on buyers and sellers. But wouldn't that be nice? The millennials have had it hard. So if something gets a little easier for them, that would be great. I'm excited to share my crush today. I am loving this book that I'm reading. It's called I Miss You When I Blink by Mary Laura Philpott normally when I wake up in the morning, you know, I start doing my stuff, whether I've got some computer work to do or you know, getting ready to podcast or throwing some laundry in or something. And since I've received this book, I said to myself, I'm going to give myself 20 minutes, half hour in the morning to read it because I'm enjoying it so much. So now if I wake up and I think, oh, I would just roll over and go back to sleep a little bit. And I think, oh no, but I can get up and read my book. So I come downstairs Aww. and I make a cup of tea and I sit in that chair in my kitchen and I'm reading it. I'm laughing out loud, nodding and 
and thinking back to various times in my life, it is a book of essays and it is just really spot on. I love it. Uh, So I highly recommend it. I'll put the link to this book in the show notes. Wonderful. Oh, I'll have to check that out. That sounds exciting. So my crush is a little bit, it's almost more information than an item that I learned. Okay. It kind of blew my mind, but it does, there is a specific item in mind. And uh, do you have one of the tilt head KitchenAid mixers? I do. I think a lot of people have one of those and I do too. And when I was going with the bread making, it said, you know, to use a five quart bowl mixer. And so I had no idea what size bowl I had, Uh, you know, the mixing bowl that goes on there. So I poured the water in to kind of figure out, and I have a four and a half quart. And I thought, you know, I wish I had a five quart bowl mixer. Well, then, you know what I found out? You can just put a five quart bowl on my mixer. Wow. (laughs) I mean, I didn't know that. This is great news. So, I mean, the four and a half quart mixers, you can use the five. As long as it's for the tilt, as long as it's the um, bowl for a tilt machine, you can use the four and a half or the five bowls. And anyway, I included the link for uh, for a five quart bowl, but it totally blew my mind. I had no idea. Now, if you want a six quart, I think you have to go with the big size, the professional size. But I, I just, that was such exciting news when I realized I could just change out the bowl. No, that is great. So, because... In mine, and I'm assuming it's the same, the bowl kind of fits in and it kind of locks into place. Yes, it turns at the bottom. Yes. Right. So as long as the bottom is the same, I guess you're good to go. Exactly. And here's the other thing. Mm -hmm. Because again, with my bread making, I make it the dough for a week and it just says, just so you don't have all these bowls and things to wash, you mix up the dough in the mixing bowl and you just put that bowl in the refrigerator. So I kind of needed two bowls anyway, so I could use my mixer for other things. But I found some lids that you can use that just snap on there. Oh, wow. Good so, job. I would never, like, four and a half, five. I would probably just fudge it. And, like, it, whatever I was making would have just come in over the top. That would I would have just gone for it, I think. Good for you. You figured it out and you got the one you needed. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so we have our question today from Julie D. Julie uh, is a California girl, too, and... She said the nicest thing in her email that a DTT was one of our happiest discoveries. Oh. Yeah. So she sent us an email with some photos and she's asking about replacing her kitchen table and chairs. Her home is um, fairly traditional and she wanted to add in some modern pieces, particularly a tulip table. I don't know if everybody has can conjure in their mind what a tulip table it is, but it's no, well, it can be different colors, but usually it's white and it, it's just a very thin pedestal, flares out at the bottom, and it's kind of, uh, you know, looks almost like it's um, lacquered or a heavy plastic. And the one from Design Within Reach is the tulip shape, and then it has a marble top. And that's the one Julie's talking about. When I was looking at the photos of Julie's house, I had to say the area of her dining room was clearly the most traditional. Don't you think, Anita? Well, not only the most traditional, but what struck me when I looked at the pictures were that most of the house she had cool colors, but in that uh, kitchen nook, or I I don't know if it's kitchen nook or dining room, but the, where she's talking about changing things out, she had a very Provencal tablecloth. It was that beautiful yellow, but it's a very strong yellow that is not a cool color. And then she had the, the hutch that with the wood was a very cool brown wood. So I felt like that part of the, the house didn't seem to go with the rest of it. So I'm kind of excited for her that she's thinking about changing that out because I think it'll really uh, flow a lot better once she does that. I totally agree. I thought to myself, oh, when I read the words, I thought, oh, this might be tough in a traditional house with antiques. But then when I scrolled down to the pictures, I was like, that was the only, seemed to me, the only piece of the puzzle that really could be changed. Mm -hmm. Um, The rest of it was a little bit more modern. You could still mix in antiques, but definitely, as you're saying, more neutral, but cooler tones. The kitchen was white. And then there was this wood, giant wooden hutch with a table that looked like an April Cornell tablecloth on it or something. So yes, Julie, I think you can totally take that out. And I love the idea of adding in a tulip table. I think it will really work nicely in that space. What I would say about your hutches, I would take everything off it 
I may even paint it white to match your kitchen. Then I would be very selective as to what I put back in. And I would work in the colors that you have in the rest of the house, more of those cooler tones. As far as chairs around the tulip table, it's funny that you should say that because I'm doing that with a client, but it's a, it's going to be a smaller sized table with some bent wood chairs. Yeah. So the juxtaposition is very nice there. And I, Julie was mentioning chairs like with caning or wood. And I think that would look really great. Yeah. I was even thinking maybe some kubu chairs, but they might be too chunky for a tulip table. I'm not, you know, it would really depend. You'd have to see right. the right ones. But I'm I'm in agreement with what you're saying, Kelly. Is that uh, you know, you want to cool down that area so that it goes. Definitely, that tablecloth uh, is not working. I think with the rest of the room. So uh, when you go with the so what I would just I think the table she's talking about the tulip table would be perfect. Uh, even if she went with something else, I would definitely stick with the cool colors and the hutch. I would probably either move somewhere else or paint it again. I feel like the wood. But, you know, she could just try it. I think once she gets the table in there, I would take another look, take some pictures. It may work. And like you said, it might work if she changed out the things in the hutch. But certainly painting the hutch is an option or switching it out for something else. She could even go with a buffet there and then do some plates on the wall or a big mirror. So, yeah, yeah. I think it's, it's, oh, it's, it's, I'm excited nice. for it. I think it's going to look great. Green Chef is a delicious delight any time of year, but especially during the holidays. What a wonderful vision to behold of the Green Chef boxes on your doorstep. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. And it makes eating well so easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced diet. So let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season. And if you've got guests coming, shop Green Bundles. They're now available at the Green Market. It's your one-stop shop for nutritious grab-and-go breakfasts, including vegan options, brunch kits, wholesome lunches, ready-to-eat snacks, veggie sides, and more. You can feel your best this December and do your best with Green Chef because they offset 100% of the delivery emissions as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. Go to greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 60DTT and get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 6060DTT to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Go ahead, clean out your closet, then head straight to Quince. I love every item Quince offers from wardrobe to decor, and I can really recommend their Ultra Stretch Super Wide Leg Pants at $49.90. The price is unbeatable, and the look is so flattering. It keeps you in on top and flares out of the bottom. Everything feels right with Quince. The price, the quality, and the sustainability. Quince offers a range of luxury wardrobe and home goods at prices within reach. And like Quince's clothing, their home goods are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. Once you've cleaned out your closet and refreshed with quince, you can also add something to your home decor. So give your wardrobe and your home the refresh it needs with quince. Go to quince.com slash DTT to get free shipping and 365 day returns on your next order. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash DTT for free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash DTT. And let me know how you love those pants. I think so too. So go for it, Julie. And we'd love to see some afters or midway photos if you want to send those along. That would be great. And I'll put a link to what a tulip table looks like in the show notes in case um, somebody can't visualize that in their heads. So this was a lot of fun. I hope everybody is sleeping well. If you're not, take our tips and ideas and transform your room and see if it works for you. Yeah, if not, then just add a melatonin or something. (laughs) And and remember, we're here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time. I want to remind you that we are available for design consults. We take on your design dilemmas, questions, renovations, 
any project you want to talk about, any room, any space, we are here for you. And we really do enjoy doing these. And I think we've helped people a lot. So if you want to sign up for a consult, head to the link in the show notes. It's decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash consult. We hope to talk to you soon.